wonderful people. Hello, wonderful people. It's Philippa here from Chris and Philly Functional Medicine. I am on a mission to end body burnout for good, especially in high achieving parents and mostly especially our mamas out there. Um, so today I wanted to talk about gut and also stress. So, you know, three main symptoms that we're really good at addressing are energy, mood and gut issues. And they're major signs that your body systems are feeling burnt out or like are literally burnt out. Um, so here's the thing. So let's, let's just start talking off about gut. So if you're someone who's living with an unhappy belly, maybe that looks like bloating or reflux, abdominal pain, constipation, loose stools, um, then you will want to listen to this video. Um, if you've tried working on your gut um, by taking, you know, medications like PPIs or antispasmatics, or maybe you've even tried different natural gut supplements like probiotics or digestive enzymes, but you're still struggling, then it's highly likely, and actually I'm pretty sure you would agree with me that you haven't got to the root cause of your gut issues yet. Now, there are, there are many kind of different root causes to gut issues, um, but one of the big things that we see time and time again, especially with our busy, high-achieving um, uh, clients are stress and, you know, talking about stress in all facets. So stress breaks down the gut in four major ways. And I want to show you this so you can really understand the connection between stress and gut. So one way is um, to do with your stress hormone cortisol. So cortisol actually suppresses your immune system. And when cortisol is raging too high or it's become very dysfunctional um, and you have what is called adrenal fatigue, then it's going to have a really strong impact on your gut. So within your gut lining, you have what's called your secretary IgA. And these are your immune cells that help to, you know, keep your, um, that help to keep, keep your, your gut healthy and free of pathogens. Um, and also like uh, it keeps you from developing food sensitivities and allergies and all that sort of stuff. Now, there's a strong link between cortisol and secretary IgA. So when cortisol is high, it actually drags down your CIGA levels. Um, we can actually measure CIGA during or in a functional medicine stool test. So we can actually see like, is it being suppressed? And do you also have adrenal issues? Okay, well, in order to get your gut functioning better, we need to actually start addressing your adrenal glands and your cortisol and your stress hormones. Um, when CIGA is too high, it actually tells us that your immune system is either fighting a gut infection, something like parasites, yeast infections, bacterial infections, or it might be responding to problematic foods like gluten is a big one. When your CIGA levels are too low, well, low is not good news. It really tells us that over time, your immune system in your gut lining has depleted due to, say, chronic gut infections, problematic foods, medications, and or stress, adrenal fatigue. Um, and so if these, uh, if this is depleted, then it's more likely that you're going to develop gut infections, uh, which then can lead to gut symptoms like bloating, constipation, heartburn. Um, low CIGA can also lead to immune system issues. So if you're someone who gets chronic infections, whether that be in the gut or somewhere like the sinuses, the vagina, the your UTIs or chest or skin infections, chances are your CIGA levels are really low. And in order to fully overcome those reoccurring infections, you have to first address your CIGA levels and the underlying causes, which is most often stress. So stress also reduces blood flow. When your cortisol is out of balance or if your brain and your neurotransmitters are all out of whack and you're feeling a lot of stress and overwhelm, um, it can affect your gut by reducing blood flow to your digestive tract. Uh, so when your body or really your mind is under stress, blood flow to the gut is restricted to allow maintenance of appropriate flows to other flight pipe body systems. So it's kind of like 
the the blood leaves your digestive tract it goes to your um you know your skeletal muscles uh so that you can run away or so that you can fight the tiger and this leaves the gut in its own state of stress where all types of gut issues can occur um so that intestinal blood flow will is really critical for digestion and if that's not there then your stomach stops producing acid to break down foods um it can prevent your gallbladder from producing bile and squirting into the small intestine to break down food and when these digestive organs aren't working properly you just struggle to break down food so you can get like things like uh, bloating heartburn because these big fat food particles are sitting where they shouldn't be then you can have pathogens overgrowing munching onto these things um so for that instance, stress needs to be addressed. Now, cortisol, your stress hormone, is also very catabolic. So when cortisol is switched on, again, it puts you into that fight, flight, fight or, or fight or flee mode. Um, and in order for that to happen and for you to get that burst of energy to fight the tiger, your body becomes really catabolic. So it actually starts eating away at muscle tissue from your body. And the easiest place for your body to pull amino acids is from within your gut lining. And so if you're in a really chronic state of stress, then you can literally be pulling on those amino acids from your gut lining, which then can lead to something called leaky gut or intestinal permeability. And once that gut lining starts to separate, your body becomes really inflamed. Your gut becomes really inflamed. Um, you st definitely start developing gut issues. You also often have systemic issues because food particles, pathogens, toxins go through the gut lining when they shouldn't into the bloodstream, which then causes antibodies to be produced. Now, the fourth um, way that stress breaks down the gut is all to do with your beautiful vagus nerve. Um, I can't talk about the connection between stress and the gut without talking about the vagus nerve. So for anyone who has gut issues out there, I'm sure you would agree, most people would agree that stress often flares up and exacerbates your gut issues and maybe even causes them. So the reason for this is you have a, or one of the reasons is due to your vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve connects your brain to your gut. If you're feeling really anxious, this nerve will send signals to switch the digestive system off, which then can lead to all sorts of gut issues. There's actually research out there that supports the gut brain connection. Um, some research shows that when participants are under stress, they're migrating motor complex. So that's the muscle contractions that move food from one end to the other actually switch off. There is a higher prevalence 44% higher prevalence of sexual or phys physical abuse in patients with GI disorders. Clinically, I have seen that absolutely. Some of the worst gut cases often have unresolved um, trauma and abuse in their past or currently. Um, People, another research shows that people with anxiety are more likely to have chronic post-infectious gut issues following food poisoning. So rather than just having like the gastro diarrhea for 24 hours, it continues to cause issues ongoing. Um, now, there are some things, my five hot tips for addressing uh, stress um, so that you can help address your gut issues would be testing and holistically addressing your adrenal stress hormones and or neurotransmitters, depending on what is out. This is absolutely essential. If these areas are missed, you will likely never get full rev rev revolution, full resolution of your gut issues. My second tip would be to work with an expert skilled in addressing how you respond to stress and helping you to reprogram your thought, feeling and behavioral patterns. Because at the end of the day, the way that we think about ourselves is almost always at the root cause as to why someone's body systems have burnt out. Um, I'm a big believer in that. Third would be to address dietary lifestyle and environmental stresses. So things like gluten, sugar, processed foods, even nasty veggies not that veggies and fruit are nasty but even fruits and veggies that have been sprayed with nasty stuff that can really just put more stress onto your system lifestyle like your work-life balance can be a major cause of stress so let's sort that out let's look at the underlying causes to why you it's imbalanced in the first place and also environmental stresses so toxins clear those out of your out of your your body work on your detox pathways so that you're not adding to your stress bucket with these stealthy environmental toxins. Um, the fourth uh, tip I would say is just to start engaging in daily acts of stillness. Something like meditation, breath work, mindfulness, yoga, qigong can really just help you to 
center yourself and stimulating your vagus nerve would be my fifth tip. So um, there are some really simple techniques that you can do to stimulate your vagus nerve, things like humming, hum or singing or yodeling or alternating nostril breathing. I actually have a blog post on alternating nostril breathing um, on my blog if you want to have search that out. Um, so if you're keen to learn more about the connection between stress and the gut, we've created a 10 part mini course called Conquering Hormonal and Gut Burnout. It's really specific around like hormonal stress issues, then causing gut issues and how you need to or what you need to do to test and treat those um, body systems. So um, I'll pop the link underneath this video that you can click onto. Um, and I believe you get a lot of value out of that. So thank you so much for listening, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful day.